Welcome back. So I was in on Sunday and decided to uh, run the engine again just to see uh, if I could find anything else that needed uh, some attention. So here you can see I'm actually already running up to 2500. I did run it up um, to about 3500 RPM uh, just briefly and then I let it come down to 25 and I ran it for about 35 minutes. And this is what it looks like. And just to give you a close up, this is uh, basically just a screenshot there of the run there at the highest power setting. So you can see there about uh, two thirds of the way down the engine speed, 3504 RPMs. Fuel flow there is uh, 20 gallons an hour. And that was 100% setting. And you know, of course I can dial in more fuel if I want, but um, it's at that point it's just really starting to, you know, add more fuel and not really do much. Uh, what was interesting to see there is above the fuel flow, you got the EGTs. So this is, there's one sensor there on um, the first outlet of the first turbo and that's the the red one and then the yellow one is on the outlet of the second turbo and interesting to see there it got to actually 1600 um, degrees Fahrenheit there on the first one and you'll see um, some video in a minute that's interesting but um, if you actually look at the top there the boost uh, 45.1 that's total so subtract 14 from that for the, t the total amount of boost which is a little higher than I really want it to be, but you know I'm t testing the engine to see um, you know pushing the limits right now uh, while it's on the test stand instead of doing it in the air. And ultimately, when we get the new pulley on the upper drive there, I'll be able to run it um, sort of be like in a lower gear, so I'll be able to get more horsepower out of it without um, straining it quite so much, and so the boost won't be uh, quite as high. And also, you know, ultimately when we have our final prop on there, I'll dial in the the um, static pitch setting there so you can't get that much boost so basically I'll be dialing in 3800 rpm as the maximum and probably 40 psi as the maximum boost um, something like that which you should still get us uh, close to around 400 horsepower um, which would will be uh, sufficient I guess uh, other than that everything else looks pretty good on there I also um, did a little mod and put an extra filter in parallel for my uh, just like a water filter there for my um, heat exchanger setup where the water is coming out and cycling back into my 255 gallon drums and that um, gave me a, a quicker flow rate because those filters are actually a little bit restrictive um, so it gave me a quicker flow rate and um, I was able to run the engine for the solid hour there pretty much without it even getting warm um, it was just you know hovering there around uh, 200 and 10 degrees and slowly climb, climbing up on the oil temperature which is good so happy about all that um, didn't really find any problems no oil leaks or anything like that on this go around and uh, you'll see in a second here uh, what it looked like um, when I put the GoPro there I had it mounted on the Y pipe there to see if there was any um, uh, exhaust leak or anything like that uh, but anyway take a look at this and uh, and I'll describe what happened so as you can see I mounted the GoPro on the back of the engine mount there just in front of the prop and looking at the Y pipe there and the little flex joint there coming out of the header from the right hand side of the engine and uh, there's that new little oil air separator there on the right hand side and this is with the engine um, starting to do the run up to high power and as you can see here it's uh, starting to get a little red there and heating up and getting hotter and hotter <laughs> and uh, ultimately it just gets glowing red which is probably about around about a thousand degrees Fahrenheit something like that and you can see little sparks coming off there off of the wrap and I didn't put that much wrap on that Y pipe so I'm still um, debating exactly how much more wrap I'm going to put on there or if I'm going to put like um, a blanket around this section um, but it's interesting the header didn't have the same problem um, just the Y pipe got really hot there um, and then you can see it slowly cooling down as well um, so probably what I'm going to do is put a blanket around there and uh, just to protect like the belts um, from the radiant heat coming off of that and that little smoke coming off there that's basically just smoke coming off the wrap from the header there and I think it's just the first couple go rounds of uh, you know running it up to high temperatures it's going to smoke like that until it's all sort of uh, baked in I guess and this little undulation that you're seeing in the image right now is actually the camera vibrating. The engine wasn't really doing that because uh, the, the camera was just on the little GoPro um, flex arm. 
and the other thing to notice is the oil slowly feeding there in the air oil separator so that's actually doing the job although there was a lot of grey smoke still coming out of the end of that I didn't um, put anything across it just to see if there was any oil in it um, but it looked like you know there's a lot of smoke still coming out of the or you know, there's you know vapor still coming out of the uh, thing there and what's interesting to note is um, on this um, time lapse I'm going to show you of this it's just going to show it to you three times so you can see it going on watch the, how much the expansion uh, happens there on the Y pipe I mean that Y pipe just grows like crazy and um, you can see the expansion joint really working um, well there so I'm glad we have all those but that's the uh, way Audi put them in there I'm going to be looking uh, to do it on the other part of the exhaust too so look at that interesting how much that expands and contracts so and then I got some flare as well on the other side and uh, unfortunately I didn't set the scale to static there and this is time lapse as well so it really doesn't show much anything of much interest there anyway on to Monday morning and Keith and Jeremy are in now to help out and the first thing we did for Monday morning was clean up the shop and reorganize things as you can see there so it's um, much tidier now things are all put away where they need to be things all the tables are lined up nicely so there's different molds uh, ready to be laid up and all that stuff and uh, so uh, that basically took us um, the morning um, but now there's tons more room in the shop and really easy for us to work especially um, you know with more people around we don't want to be bumping into each other all the time so it's nice to get uh, everything cleaned up and organized and one of my first jobs was to make another little fixture for the door lock so I could uh, drill out and make a slot there where the little actuator arm is going to be for the hook locks and so there's my little jig and drilled a couple of holes there and then um, with the Dremel I was able to sort of cut slots in there you see that one's got the holes drilled and they were mainly just so I, I get the right positioning so there's uh, what the slots look like and um, I had to experiment a little bit so some of them are a little bit bigger than what I thought and the orientation's um, a little bit different but anyway you'll see more of that coming soon but I'm slowly getting the internals of the locks together and uh, be able to um, have them installed and then start working on the um, actuating rods and the center um, quadrant that's going to um, turn them all and on the hook boxes themselves I had to notch out this little um, piece there which I knew was going to happen and that's where the actuator arm comes out of there but oh, you'll see more of that on the next update I'll have most of that together and one of the first projects we had Jeremy and Keith work on was um, creating these little extension walls for our oven so we can uh, fit the uh, strakes in the oven as well because now that they're bonded onto the fuselage um, so here they're just creating these little walls that are basically four foot wide and six foot tall and then a little roof extension as well and that way we sort of make like a tea hanger for or tea oven for the fuselage when we um, are ready to go and post cure it and you'll see that come together in a month or two when we finally get around to having everything done for the post cure and now that there's all this space in the shop and everything's all nicely organized with the tables in rows um, Jeff's got all kinds of molds out there and as you can see he's actually laying up um, one of the skins for one of the rudders right now and uh, there's the first two so that's a, an inner and an outer skin for one of the rudders and, uh, and then in the background there he's working on uh, setting up the next one so he's making good progress with uh, getting this stuff laid up and um, Zach's busy doing all the cutting and Devin's helping with uh, the resin and stuff so everybody's keeping pretty busy and here Keith is using the reamer to just ream out the holes that are for the actuators for the brakes on the um, rotor pedal arms and I had Jeremy putting the um, bearing or pressing the bearings into place for these little actuator arms that are also part of the rotor assembly and you'll see that coming together um, in more detail shortly and now we're on to Tuesday today and uh, you can see Jeff and Devin working on laying up the next set of um, skins for the other rudder so he just about got that one or the first one done so he's just flying along with these things and as I was saying uh, for a long time um, things go quickly when you already have the molds done so here's Zach being super busy cutting all the different um, carbon fiber for all the different layups that Jeff's doing so he's pretty much at that table most of the day 
and there's those two rudder skins now under vacuum so there's um, in a day and a half there he's got basically the rudders done left and right and there's the other ones already been um, cured and trimmed off just sitting back in the mold there and uh, you see it here I'll just lift it up and you can have a look how it looks underneath because he sprays um, Jeff sprays the primer in there for anything that's an outside surface part so you don't have to prime it after that you just sand it and paint it um, so yeah those are looking good and they they mate together nicely and uh, here's a rudder pedal so now I've got the bushings pushed into there and then the larger bushings at the top um, and it's a sort of oil oil impregnated bushings and this is what it looks like with one of the sides sort of mostly assembled well partly assembled because the brakes aren't on there yet the actuators for that and obviously the pedals aren't on there yet still waiting to get those back from uh, CNC and again they're still a surprise but um, coming together as you remember seeing the CAD of this a while ago it looks like the CAD except it's more colorful um, and I've actually um, bonded in the hard points or the little mounting screws for those as well today I've got uh, just five minute glued in to the fuselage and here uh, Keith and uh, Jeremy are just finishing off um, finished all oh, those um, extra doors there for the oven or walls walls and roof sections so I believe there was one two three six eight pieces all together that need to be made and uh, here you can see Jeff has also gone and uh, done one of the ailerons um, I think that's the upper skin for one of the ailerons here yeah, one of the upper skins so um, he's just flying along so it's five different parts he's made in two days and uh, here's some other ones that are already been prepped so he's got the core laid out for those um, ready to lay up and these are the outer skins for the winglets now um, with that curvature built in there the radius at the end of the wings so he's got the both the left and the right ready um, and they'll probably be laid up tomorrow for those ones and Devon's already got the other molds for the ailerons there waxed up so that they'll be ready to prime probably tomorrow and uh, I would guess by the end of the week we're going to have the ailerons and rudders done and also the sides of the winglets created so that's pretty good progress anyway that's our update for the first half of this week and um, thanks for watching and uh, tune in again on Saturday for um, to see what we get done by the end of the week